Hello, everybody, and welcome back to After Further Review. My name is Jacob Ford, and I'll be hosting this thing. And joining me today are two great football minds, Zach Travelstead once again and Andrew Willett. How are you doing today, guys? Doing pretty good. Doing pretty good. Just uh, <laughs> living the morning up. <laughs> Looking forward to some Thursday night football tonight. And yeah. Oh, yeah. This weekend. Awesome. Me too. Um, well, this is after further review, so we're going to go under that hood and examine what's going on in this wild NFL season. Today, we'll be making all kinds of predictions. We got bold predictions, game predictions, who we think is going to win the MVP. Um, and that's not all. We, for all the fantasy football people out there, don't worry. We're the football nerds. We've done our research for you, and we'll have precious insight like sleepers, who to sit, who to start. It's going to be a great show, so let's kick this thing off. All right, Andrew, my friend, um, you are new to the podcast, so um, I'm going to put you on the hot seat. Uh, last week, Zach and I, we, we made our Super Bowl predictions. I went with the uh, Steelers and Packers. I, I am a Steelers fan, so I might get a little hate for that, but um, and then Zach went with the Seahawks and Chiefs, so... Who are you predicting for your for the Super Bowl and why? So obviously we know the hottest teams in the league are the Chiefs and the Seahawks. But I didn't want to go uh, match straight up with Zach. So I took a page from each of your books. And I took uh, – I think Kansas City is definitely coming out of the AFC. And then out of the NFC, I took a page out of your book, Jacob, and took the Packers. So we will have a Chiefs-Packers Super Bowl. I like it. I like it. So who do you got? Chiefs or Packers? Oh, I think the Kansas City Chiefs are going to outlast the Green Bay Packers. The Packers, they've uh, put together a good team for Aaron Rodgers this year, but uh, you saw them. They didn't take uh, any weapons in the draft for him early on. And so I, I just think the Chiefs uh, defending Super Bowl champions. They've got the NFL golden boy and Patrick Mahomes. I think the Kansas City Chiefs are going to go back to back this year. Yeah, I could definitely see that. The, the Chiefs look really solid right now. Um, it, it doesn't seem like there's a lot of teams in the AFC that can match up with them. It's almost <laughs> like they're just toying with their opponents. Yeah. Just, I mean, they yeah. have so many weapons, especially when you add like Clyde's Edward Tolaire. Um, they got Kelsey, Tyreek Hill, Sammy Watkins. You got guys like Michael Hardman who'd come out of nowhere and like, well, pull off like a crazy game um they're they're definitely stacked <laughs> and let's not forget uh andy reed as well one of the best offensive minds in football so oh, he yes. that to patrick mahomes and uh i i have trouble not or pitching against the chiefs yeah and, then, and they're i mean they're gonna be good for a while too they got patty mahomes locked up for like 10 years they got yeah. andy reed contract yeah oh yeah uh, I like the Packers too. I think they've been lighting it up on offense this year. And Rodgers has, has a lot of like healthy weapons right now. Um, I like what they're doing. They're undefeated, playing good football. Uh, I really, I see uh, Aaron Rodgers. It's about time he's gotten back to a Super Bowl. So I think we'll see the Packers this year. Yeah. Okay. So, like I said, we will be making lots of predictions this week. So, um, give me one bold prediction for the entire NFL season. It can literally be anything. Um, how about you, Zach? For my bold prediction, which it, it, my prediction is going to determine on a couple different things. I could potentially see the season either be put on hold for a bit because of the whole COVID I don't think they'll shut it down. I think that's too much money they'll be losing for the season to be shut down. Um, now, to be put on hold, there's different things that have to be like factored in for that. I, I think it depends on how many different teams get in contact with COVID. Um, I think right now with just the Titans, it's manageable. It's It sucks, but it's manageable. Um, if anything, if it comes down to it, they could – push back the playoffs a little bit to get those games in and maybe do like a Sunday night and then a Thursday night game and then get that week off and the playoffs the next week, depending on how many games they don't play. Um, 
my prediction is that the season season could be really weird this year. Like it, it could be put on a holdout or it could just be a very weird uh, end of the season with uh, teams trying to catch up uh, with games. Yeah, I think that's definitely a very good possibility. <laughs> just looking at the Titans right now. Oh, oh my gosh, so much uncertainty with that whole situation. Um, what is your bold prediction, Andrew? Well, uh, not to pity bath off of Zach, but that was my bold prediction that these outbreaks of COVID-19 and around the NFL, they're not done. Like after this, we, we are going to see more of them. But uh, football related, I, uh, I, I'll have one for our hometown Colts and then uh, one for uh, around the league. I think the Indianapolis Colts are – uh, position, positioning themselves well to make a deep uh, postseason run. And I think they will not only win their division uh, to get a first-round playoff game, but I think they will uh, go as far in the playoffs until they reach the Kansas City Chiefs. And I think the Chiefs are uh, – honestly, the Colts match up well with them. But I, I just – I can't pitch against the Chiefs. So uh, we'll see a good team because – Last year, we saw that Colts team uh, hold the Chiefs to just 13 points uh, with Jacoby Brissett under center. And so we know they play the Chiefs well. So I'm not going to go out and make any prediction that the Colts will beat the Chiefs. But uh, we're going to get a good game. And uh, I think Indianapolis is a dark horse contender. And then for around the lead, I would say my bold prediction is that the San Francisco 49ers will not make the playoffs. Last year's NFC champion, not making it this year. Uh, yeah, I, I like it. I like it a lot. Um, yeah, the Colts, I was a little skeptical at first. Um, but I, I think as long as Phillip Rivers, like, doesn't turn the ball over, I, they're a great team. Like, the defense has looked amazing. Yeah. Well, we have to keep in mind that the uh, that the quarterbacks that they have faced on the other side. But, uh, yeah, the that defense is exceptional. <laughs> I think Phillip Rivers is going to have another level to reach up to keep in mind no preseason first year with uh in indianapolis so i, I think uh the, the colts are gonna be pretty good at the end of the day yeah um i have i've got one bold prediction and it's football related um or of course it's football related it's not i'm not doing the doom and gloom with the COVID thing though <laughs> i'm gonna stick to the football um, my bold prediction is that Ryan Fitzpatrick will hold off fifth overall pick Tua and remain the Dolphins starting quarterback for the entire season as long as he avoids injury. Uh, I think Fitzpatrick has been playing solid football. He still has some turnover issues um, there, here and there, but uh, most importantly, what he's doing is keeping the Dolphins in games. And um, yes, they're one in three, but their schedule has been pretty tough. Uh, they almost beat the Bills. They almost, they were close against the, the Seahawks. Um, and then Fitzpatrick played a flawless game against Cincinnati. Although, I mean, it is Cincinnati, but um, he, he played really well and uh, led, leading to a blowout win. Uh, so he's keeping them in games. Brian Flores is comfortable with him. Um, they're comfortable with him leading that offense. And I think the, the playbook's pretty wide open um, with Fitzpatrick at the helm. So I say the Dolphins don't rush Tua out there. Um, don't risk him getting re-injuring re that big injury that he had. And uh, I think I, I think football fans might be disappointed, but I, I think you're going to see some Fitz magic this year for the whole year. Uh, <laughs> that is my bullet prediction. <laughs> <laughs> No, totally. He's playing great football. I, I just, I don't see that Miami team winning a whole lot of games. So uh, I think at some point we're going to get some uh, Tua out in Miami. We'll see. Yeah. Okay. So now give me a bold prediction for this week's games. So it could be a stat, an upset, really anything. Ooh. So... I'm going to go with an upset. You might call me crazy, all right? You might call me crazy, but I think the Orange Devils named the Bengals 
are going to come in Baltimore, and Joe Burrow is going to outplay Lamar Jackson. Because I think the Bengals' defense, it's not bad, but I think they'll stop Lamar, and I think the Bengals will win by a game-ending field goal. Ooh. I, 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 like I said, might call me crazy. Yeah, that is bold. I have a feeling, though. I have a good feeling. <laughs> I, on the other hand, cannot see the Bengals uh, <laughs> down last year with winning MVP, Lamar Jackson, and the Ravens. I, my bold prediction is that the NFC East leading Philadelphia Eagles are going to take down Jacobs. Pittsburgh Steelers. Wow. <laughs> no more undefeated in Pittsburgh. Wow. I will say, I mean, historically, Mike Tomlin's Steelers teams are not good after bye weeks, and they'd love to play down the competition. They're the competition. So, as a Steeler fan, like I, I, I'm worried. They're. I, I think they'll. I, I think it's very likely. <laughs> I think. I think they're going to be a little rusty coming off the bye. Um, so I definitely, I, I don't, I, I could see it. I could see it for sure. <laughs> as much as I don't want to. <laughs> well, you, like you said, coming off the bye, and you've got an Eagles team. Their defense has been playing pretty solid. They just got a win to somehow at one, two, and one uh, be first place in their division. I think, uh, I think the Eagles are going to pull one out. All right, we'll see. Um, my bold prediction is um, – I'm with Zach here. Zach, I do not think you're crazy. Um, I, I think the Cincinnati Bengals are going to go on the road. They're going to upset reigning MVP Lamar Jackson. Um, Lamar, he sat out Wednesday's practice with a knee injury. It's not considered serious at all, but maybe he's not 100% out there. Could impact the offense a little bit. We'll see. Um, but Joe Burrow finally got a taste of what it's like to win in the NFL. Yeah. And does not like losing. Um, he's proven that he can air it out in this league. I, I'm looking, and I I don't think the Ravens are a very good team when it when the, if they get behind and they have to throw. So I could see I could see the shape notes being upset as well. <laughs> yeah, I mean Bengals uh, secondary is not it, it's not bad. They're all young. That that defense is young, except for a couple few guys. Um, but that 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 secondary is extremely young. They're athletic. They're playmakers. They can fly all the way, like they can fly all over the field. So, I mean, the the wide receivers will have to step up. And I mean, especially like we saw against the Chiefs, Lamar did not pass the ball very well at all. Not at all. So I feel like this game, if they want to win, he's got to pass the ball. He's going to have to pass the ball because the Bengals front uh, defensive line is, it's a good defensive line. I think it could stop the run. Uh, I mean, they'd have to watch if Lamar plays, obviously, but they'd have to watch like the QB runs, um, the QB options and such. So, but I, Lamar can't win the game by himself running 300 yards. He's going to get tired. And I mean, if that's all they do, then that's all they do. Um, So, yeah, I, I think the secondary, that secondary is not bad. It's not bad. Andrew's looking at us like we're crazy. Excuse <laughs> me, but did you just try to compare Lamar Jackson against the Chiefs as if the Chiefs are anywhere close to the Cincinnati Bengals? Hey, 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 you, hey. you know what? <laughs> Mark That'll my words, funny. Lamar Jackson is going to do just fine this weekend, and the Ravens are going to win by double-digit points. I'm calling it now. Hey, Joe, Joe, Bur- Joe Burrow is, isn't the only dual threat. Or Lamar Jackson isn't the only dual threat quarterback out there. Joe Burrow can run it too, man. They don't want to be ready. They got, they got T. Higgins, rookie wide receiver, putting up some points. Um, Joe Mixon's coming off a great game. Joe like Mixon's great game. Rolling. <laughs> I mean, I don't like the Bengals or Ravens as a Steelers fan, so I'm good either way. I, I, would, like to, I would love to see the Bengals upset the Ravens, though. Oh, I'm sure you would. It's a Steelers thing. 
Okay, so we'll keep the hot take train rolling. Um, I want to hear who you guys believe is leading the MB MVP race so far. I think this is close. I think right now the MVP race is very close between two people, Josh Allen and Russell Wilson. It's very close. Personally, I think Russell's winning right now. I think Russell's ahead. Um, I feel like his team looks a lot better all around offensively um, than the Bills do. Uh, I mean, Russell's, Russell and the Seahawks are playing great ball right now. Very great ball. Um, I mean, Josh Allen and the, the Bills, they had they had a very tough game against the Rams. They got very lucky on their last drive um, off that pass interference that put them at like the three-yard line or something like that. Without that, they would have lost the game. Um, so I, I'd have to go with Russell is ahead right now. Um, just the fact that he controls the whole team um that team wins or loses by his shoulders um yeah so i i have to say russell jacob zach is absolutely right except <clears throat> that it is russell wilson and it is russell wilson by a long shot a not so close second would be josh allen i 100 percent agree with him but russell wilson is doing everything for this team just like zach said and it's, it's different than any other year Russell Wilson has been in this league. They are turning to him to throw the ball a lot. It is – Russell Wilson is far and away through four games the MVP favorite. And I don't think that's a very bold prediction, but he is playing some great football. Yeah, Russell Wilson, he's balling out. He's cooking right now for sure. <laughs> um, I think when you see Josh Allen uh, play some better competition before we can – uh, say he's too close to Russell Wilson because Russell Wilson is doing it against some good teams and he's playing well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I mean, I agree. It's definitely between those two right now, um, Josh Allen and Russell Wilson. Um, but I'm, I'm going to spice things up a little bit and I'm, I'm going to go with Josh Allen to be the MVP for right, for right now. Uh, I think that could change. I, I, like you said, I want to see some more. But right now, I'm going to go with Josh Allen. Um, Zach actually mentioned on the podcast last week that the voters do not seem to like Russell Wilson when it comes to the MVP race. He has not got ever gotten an MVP vote. And or, wait, is it one vote? or? He's yeah, he's never gotten one MVP vote. Never. Yeah. Never. So, <laughs> I, th I think it could happen again for poor Russell Wilson. I, I don't, I don't, I'd love to see him win it finally, but I think it could happen again. Um, the only reason I'm going with Josh Allen right now is that people just seem to be so infatuated with the, the breakout season that he's having. Um, he's on an undefeated team. He'll, he'll be the guy that leads the bills to finally winning that division. Um, he's, he's a dual threat chronic quarterback like Lamar Jackson was last year. He's got 12 touchdowns, three rushing touchdowns. Um, so he has the stats. He's winning. And I just think right now it's a trendy, kind of sexier pick than Wilson, who's been around a while. So that's why I'm going with uh, Josh Allen. That's the only reason. <laughs> Russell Wilson. I, I can't tell you anything else. All right. All right. We'll see. I definitely think – also, hey, I'll throw it out there. Kyler Murray, <laughs> if, he play, if he can play some killer games, not turn the ball over with his rushing ability and the, the rushing stats, I, I don't know. He could sneak into that as a third, as a third option there. <laughs> He's not having a breakout year, but I think before you go to him, you got to take a peek at last year's MVP or two years ago's MVP. As long as those guys stay healthy, they are in the race. Yeah. Patrick Mahomes and Lamar I'd also down. say uh, – Aaron Rodgers right now. I mean, he's probably my number three right now. Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Okay, him and him and Patrick Mahomes are probably three, four. <laughs> I don't know the right order, but they're they're right there. So 
Yeah, I mean, it's still early, too, so who knows what's going to happen. Um, yeah, I think Russell Wilson and Josh Allen are definitely top two right now. Okay, so next I want to do a quick little segment that I call Drama Alerts. You ready for this? <laughs> um, as Zach already knows, this is a fun segment I like to do, inspired by my weird obsession with reality television, like The Bachelor and other shows. Um, I just, I love it for the drama. And there's always been drama in sports, and there's lots of drama in the NFL, especially right now. The media and people like us love, do a great job of concocting bull crap and overanalyzing the most petty things on Twitter or elsewhere and a lot of people don't like that but I think it's really really fun so I'm going to encourage it so what players teams anything in the NFL right now has you saying drama alert <laughs> I'd probably go with the Texans Texans and Bill O'Brien uh with them firing him, because uh, I mean, what kind of led up to it was, um, I know like the day of his firing, I guess JJ Watt and him were getting into it, into a heated argument, which led to a player revolt. And then later on that day, they fired him. I think that Texas team going off the rest of this year, they're, well, they're a lot better without O'Brien. They are a lot better without O'Brien as the GM and coach. Made terrible trades, terrible trades. Coaching-wise, he wasn't bad. I just don't think for how they wanted to play, he was the right coach. Um, I don't have a lot of info on the interim coach. Don't really know. I don't think they'll turn the season around, really. I think they'll be – they'll get a couple wins, but – they're not going to make the playoffs. I don't think they'll be close to winning the division. Um, but that that organization right now, I mean, they got to find a GM. They got to find a long-term head coach. They're going through some changes right now, and I think that'll affect the team a little bit. Um, but they're in a hole right now is what it comes down to. They just they got to find a way to get out of it. And I don't think this will be the season that they do. Next season will be different, but this season is just not going to be their season. Yeah, I, I need I need my man Adam Schefter to go get me some more juicy deets on the whole thing. It just sounds it sounds hilarious. It sounds super entertaining. I, I would love to just see like JJ Watt just like staring down Bill O'Brien and like He's probably like shaking in his boots. Like, <laughs> like I just I want to see all the I want all the tea, man. Come on, Adam Schefter, yeah. give give it to me. We need some cameras up in there. Like that's some that's some juicy drama we got. <laughs> I think you've uh, got the drama alert. I've got I've got a finger, and if I'm pointing it at anyone for the drama alert, it is going directly at the Houston Texans. Texans, we saw. Uh, of course, first they moved to 0-4, and then you're right. Adam Schefter tells us we hear all about uh, this apparently player revolt and J.J. Watt and the defensive coordinator getting in a heated exchange uh, before uh, week four where they went to 0-4. Uh, fire uh, Bill O'Brien the day after the game. People saying this is uh, the best thing that had ever happened to Deshaun Watson. Uh, I, I, I agree with that though. This is a, uh, this isn't going to fix their season, but uh, it was the right move and they, they might did a damn or two out of it. But I think uh, if you're looking anywhere else, you're looking at Atlanta, how has uh, Dan Quinn not lost his job yet? Uh, they're 0 and 4 after having another terrible year last year. He somehow kept his job again. And I also think you're looking at the Washington football team uh, with Dwayne Haskins uh, losing his starting job and then not, not even taking any reps at practice. It's Kyle Allen and Alex Smith that won two for the, their quarterback situation. So I think, uh, but first of all, it is the Houston Texans drama alert. 
Yeah, Bill O'Brien, he definitely did some damage for the Houston Texans. They're 0 4, and they don't even have their first or second round pick next year. So they can't even really rebuild around anyone. Ugh, like, poor Deshaun Watson. I feel bad. And he just signed a, like a big contract to stay there. So I hope they get him a good, good offensive minded coach that he likes. Um, that you got to build around Watson for sure. I did see that Houston has been in talks with Dabo. Ooh. Okay. So they could get the Dabo and Deshaun back together. Because oh, when because right the Clemson Deshaun Watson was very good. Yes, he was. I love. I don't think it'll happen because I'm sure Dabo's extremely to Clemson and want to stay there. But I'm not sure. Man, that'll just have to be something that we have to be on the lookout for. Just give Dabo like a bajillion dollars. Let him. <laughs> and that would be. That would be great. Spicy. Very spicy. <laughs> uh, yeah, some more drama alerts. Like you said, Andrew, Dwayne Haskins in the Washington football team. He hasn't been good. He hasn't been terrible. Um, but just bench for Kyle Allen. Not only is he not going to start, he was demoted to third string, which you got, you got to feel a little bad for Haskins here. I mean, he does have talent. He's been in a very dysfunctional organization. He's played in like three different offensive systems for his whole career. Um, so it, it, it does suck for him, but I can't blame Ron Rivera here. Um, they got to check out these other quarterbacks and see if they give him a shot to win, I guess. Uh, Kyle Allen showed some promise last year, but I don't know if he's that much better than Haskins. To me, it just kind of seems like they're, they're kind of giving up on Haskins and it's going to definitely, uh, hurt his NFL career for sure. Um, but, yeah. hey, let's see. Like, Washington. What's that? I said, do you think he's done in Washington? I, I'm calling it, guys. I think Haskins is done in Washington, sadly. But I this is what I'm going to say, though. I think next year, for some, for some drama, Dwayne Haskins, he's going to get traded. He's going to go be a backup somewhere. Starting quarterback's going to get hurt. Haskins is going to come out there, lead him to the playoffs, prove all the haters wrong. Dwayne Haskins, everybody, drama alert. <laughs> Isn't that the story we'd all like to oh, hear? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, so I, got, I got a couple more. Joe Flacco is going to start this week for the ringed up Sam Darnold. Um, could he take Sam Darnold's spot? Absolutely not. Drama. Oh. <laughs> Joe Flacco is washed. I do not. Yeah, he's he's not great. <laughs> he has no weapons out there in New York. He's not gonna. It's gonna be a rough week for the Jets. And then for some more drama, there's rumors that the Tennessee Titans could receive a historic punishment for violating um, COVID protocols. So that'll be fascinating to see how that unfolds. I've heard them like talking about forfeiting talking about them having to give like the Steelers a draft pick or something like I've heard all kinds of rumors like that it's going to be a historic punishment if they did find that the Tennessee Titans were neglecting the protocols so that'll be interesting to see how that unfolds so put that on drama alerts hold on gotta get my uh gotta get off the drama alert here get back to after for the review <laughs> All right, so moving right along, the next uh, portion of the show, I want to talk about fantasy football. Um, we're going to get you guys the help you need to pick up that W. There's a lot of guys that are injured out there, a lot of guys out because of COVID. So you definitely, everyone needs some fantasy help right now. On my fantasy football team, I have, lot, I have Saquon Barkley. He's gone. I had Chris Godwin. He's hurt. I had Austin Eckler. He's out. I had the Steelers defense last week who couldn't play because they got postponed. So I'm, I'm, my team is definitely hurting right now, and I'm sure many of you are. So let's, let's get some insight for, for the people out there. Um, first, can you guys give me a couple sleepers or people you should look to pick up in your fantasy league?
sleeper. Hmm. I don't know. Uh, I don't know if you can call him a sleeper, but kind of like him, Teddy Bridgewater this week. He's Ooh. facing Atlanta's defense that's been terrible against the pass. <laughs> I mean, they're kind of they've been terrible in general, um, but I think I, I don't know if you'd count him as a sleeper or not. But in my mind right now, he's definitely not a QB one because there's so many other ones that are better. But in my mind, I'd probably call him a sleeper, and he'd also be you must start this week. <laughs> a couple guys I would look at in the waiver wire. As that's ended, maybe you can pick him up. Uh, Dearness Johnson with Nick Chubb uh, being out over in Cleveland. Dearness Johnson is a good pickup, I would say. Uh, like you mentioned, Austin Eckler being hurt. So I, I wouldn't say start him this, this week, but Joshua Kelly, Justin Jackson out in uh, Los Angeles with the Chargers. A few others I would look at. Um, let's see here. T. Higgins, we mentioned him earlier, out with Joe Burrow. Uh, he's been playing some good football, and if he's available, I would definitely pick him up. Same thing with uh, Tim Patrick out in Denver. And uh, one more, I would definitely say uh, Damian Harris is someone you should pick up. Yeah, I, I like those. I like those. Um, luckily, I was able – I do have Joshua Kelly and Justin Jackson on my team, so – Hopefully that I can survive a little bit until Eckler comes yeah. back. <laughs> oh yeah. Um, I have one, I have a couple sleepers. Um, I did mention T Higgins, like you said. Um, I, I don't know why. I just, I, I like this guy. I think he, he's a talented player. I think I just like how the comfortability I see with him and Joe Burrow, like how comfortable Joe Burrow is with him. Mm -hmm. um, that's what I like about him. I think he's, he's kind of taken that, wide receiver two spot on the Bengals. Um, he's gotten 16 targets the past two weeks. Should see like pretty good volume this week against the Ravens, which they could be coming be from behind, have to throw a lot. So I do like that. Um, I have a quarterback too, um, not Teddy Bridgewater, but I've got Kirk Cousins against the Seattle Seahawks. Oh, really? Um, yeah. Okay. I, I recommended Fitzpatrick against the Seahawks last week, and so I'm going to kind of say the same thing. Like, Cousins against Seattle definitely looks sketchy on paper, but if you look at the numbers, Seattle's defense, they, they've, they have been shaky, um, especially in the secondary, and they're not really getting to the quarterback. They're, like, one of the – they've gotten, like, the least – one of the – like, they're one of the teams with the least amount of pressures on quarterbacks – and they've actually surprisingly allowed the uh, second most points to fantasy quarterbacks this year, which is kind of surprising. They've been in a lot of shootouts. So I, I think you could expect it to be a shootout with the Vikings. Kirk Cousins could put up some decent points, especially if, if in garbage time. So if you need a quarterback, look at Kirk Cousins. Another quarterback I want to throw out there uh, is Justin Herbert with the Chargers. He has had a few great weeks since he's replaced Tyrod Taylor, and I think he is definitely worth a start. And another one I heard today was a defense. Let me look for that matchup. I think the Cardinals defense, if you can pit those guys up, definitely go after him. Because like you mentioned, Joe Flacco is starting for the Jets this week. The 0-4 Jets, keep in mind, the Cardinals defense is worth a play. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, so who scares you guys this week? Who should you leave on the bench? What do you think? My biggest guy who has scared me since the season started, since week one, when I started him in fantasy, and week two when I started him, Kenyon Drake. Don't start, but Kenyon Drake. Drop him. He's done. He's not there. Like, don't know why. But Kenyon Drake just has not been efficient whatsoever this year. If anything, I would start Chase Edmonds over Kenyon Drake. Even though Drake's the running back one for the team, start Chase Edmonds. Edmonds has been getting the touchdowns. He's been getting the receiving yards. He's been getting all of it. Do not start Kenyon Drake. 
Um, Devin Singletary, he's another one I would sit this week. Zach Moss is coming back, which will limit his goal line touches and limits his usage as a whole. Because uh, Singletary was the full 100%. He'll be on the field for the majority of the time. But now with Moss back, Moss will be that bruiser. He'll go through the middle. He'll get the goal line touches. He'll get all the touchdowns. Singletary will just get a couple receiving yards and a couple touches here and there. So Singletary is also going to be another one that I would also sit. I said my six. Uh, a little bit of a disagreement with you there uh, about Kenyon Drake, Zach, but uh, people I would sit this week, any Browns not named Odell Beckham Jr., you're going up against a tough Colts defense. Uh, unless it's Odell, uh, I would sit your Browns players this week. And maybe, maybe I would go with uh, not Nick Chubb, but his backup. Kareem Hunt. Kareem Hunt, yeah. I would I would consider starting him. Uh, any Jets, I would also sit. Uh, because it's Joe Flacco. Joe Flacco's out there. And also, it's the 0-4 Jets. Why on earth do you have any Jets on your team? You probably shouldn't be playing any Jets. They shouldn't be on your roster. Uh, I would also sit Chargers running back this week. Um, I just don't like their matchup with the Saints. And also take a peek at Mike Evans because if he's not good to go, I would not play Tom Brady this week. I like it. Yeah, I'm I'm also I'm trying not to start those Charger running backs, but I may have to. <laughs> I do I, I think that game's gonna be like a shootout, may not rely on the run game so much. So I definitely agree with that. Um one I one person I have that I would sit um is Carson Wentz. Um he put up some decent numbers the last two weeks, which may tempt you into starting him, but I would not do that. Um, his offensive line is just so injured. They just lost um, Pro Bowler Lane Johnson, who's their best tackle, um, and they're facing a fresh uh, Steelers defense with two of the best pass rushers in the NFL and Bud Dupree and, T and TJ Watt. So I think that pressure could lead to some Wentz turnovers. So I don't believe the hype. Don't, don't put Wentz out there. That's, all, that's what I'm saying. Okay, so anyone you think, like, we have to start, like, you we're morons if we don't start, who you got? <laughs> Any Panther receivers, uh, such as Robbie Anderson? Uh, Anderson's a must-start no matter what. I mean, he's put up – he – they say DJ Moore's the number one receiver. I think Robbie Anderson's the number one receiver. Anderson has been so much better efficiency-wise. He's been able to catch the balls well. Uh, he's been able to get open. Just he's doing a lot better than DJ Moore. Um, Moore's got the targets. I think he's just been guarded extremely well. But I could even start more this week because against the Atlanta defense, uh, not a good defense. Um, another guy I would start this week. Antonio Gibson for the uh, Redskin for excuse me the Washington Football Team. Um, he's the running back. He's the lead back. Um, last week he had a great game, uh, fantasy wise. He got 22 points, and I think even with Kyle Allen, when he was with the Panthers, they had a check down system, and that was to Christian McCaffrey. Antonio Gibson is not a Christian McCaffrey but he plays very close to him. He's a great receiving back. He can run the ball up the gut. And I think when it comes down to it, he'll have to check down a lot because they are facing a Rams defense. It's a good defense, but I think Antonio Gibson is going to get a lot of receptions and he'll get a lot of yards off those receptions. So he is also a guy that I would start this week. Even if it's your flex, I would still start Antonio Gibson there. Yeah, uh, I completely agree. Antonio Gibson is a must start this week. Um, and I'm actually going to go the opposite of Zach over here. I think 
uh, Kenyon Drake and a guy kind of performing like him is T.Y. Hilton. I think you've got to get them out there this week. I think you need to get them out there this week. And if that doesn't pan out, then it's time to panic. This week, I think might make or break for either of those players. I think, I think that's fair. I think that's fair. <laughs> And, and a couple more guys I liked, uh, Justin Herbert, like I mentioned. Um, but Drew Brees, he's going to get Michael Thomas back this week. Uh, look out. They're playing a Chargers defense. That is not very good. I'd look out for Drew Brees. Yeah, Tom Brady just put up five touchdowns on them. So <laughs> you have to start You have to start Drew Brees for sure. I also agree with both of you guys. I, I love Antonio Gibson. Um, I've been I've really been enjoying to see how successful he's been on like the goal line situations I thought maybe he'd be more about the passing game but they've been really utilizing him in that goal line he's getting lots of touchdowns so definitely start Antonio Gibson Um, I have some other running backs that I think you'd be an idiot not to start James Robinson Mike Davis Kareem Hunt all those guys should, whether it's because of injuries or whatnot, should get a boatload of touches this week. Please, please, please start them. And then I've got a couple more. I got Justin Jefferson. I think just the way he's been playing, um, he's a talented rookie receiver. I think he's kind of worked his way to become that number two option for Kirk Cousins. Um, they're playing Seattle, who's, like I said, has been a little shaky against the pass. Um, and I think they'll they'll try to more focus more on at, shutting down Adam Thielen, and I think that could lead to Justin Jefferson producing some good numbers. So I would keep putting him in your lineups. And then, like you mentioned before, Andrew, I, li- I like the Cardinals defense this week. Um, if you need a defense to stream, they haven't been great this year, but they're playing a rough, rough, rough Jets team. <laughs> we will be throwing Joe Flacco out there, so we'll, that could be bad for the Jets. <laughs> Okay. Um, Your one thing I do have to say, your Jefferson pick, I think is very a very good one because their Jamal Adams is out. Oh, even better. <laughs> He's out for the second week in a row. So I think Thielen and Jefferson, I think Jefferson especially is going to just eat up those yards. He'll he'll get a, he'll get a lot of receptions, and I think he'll get a lot of yards. Thielen obviously will too, but. I don't think they have a ton of cornerbacks that can guard Thielen and Jefferson at once. So Jefferson will definitely get a lot of points this week. Yeah, there, there's a lot of talented rookie receivers this year. Mm-hmm. And I would not be afraid to start those guys like T. Higgins, Justin Jefferson. Um, I don't think he's a rookie, but Tim Patrick is another guy. I think you would give a look because he's just a big, fast guy. Like, Another guy, C.D. Lamb. Must Lamb. Start. Yeah. Jerry, yeah. Judy. Jerry Judy as well. Yeah. Don't be afraid to start those rookies. Okay. So, moving right along, we um, for the rest of the show, let's, let's go over some of the big matchups this week, who we think will win and why. Um, let's start with Viking Seahawks, Sunday Night Football. I think this game's going to be a shootout. But I'd start to take the Seahawks. Uh, I think their offense is just extremely good. Uh, their defense will take a little hit with Adams out. Uh, but again, they're going against a Vikings defense that's not the best as well. Uh, so I think it'll be a shootout. But I still have to give it to the Seahawks in the end. I think they're just their offense is two times better than the Vikings. Kirk Cousins is good, but he can also be shaky at times. Uh, Russell Wilson, you never get that. He's solid every single game, but some consistent numbers. Um, he's he's just solid all around. So I, I'd have to give it to the Seahawks. Yeah, you're gonna. I, I've been surprised by this Vikings team this year. They have not been uh, playing very well. Um, but it's Russell Wilson. Uh, you're not gonna pitch against him. Uh, Russell Wilson's gonna go to it the win for the Seahawks. He's not going to let his team lose. Yeah, I'm going to agree with all with you guys. Seahawks for me. Um, I, th- I think it's going to be closer than people think. I think it's going to be a shootout, like Zach said. Um, but I think Russell Wilson's just too solid. He's They're going to win that game. Next, let's do 
let's uh, do Monday Night Football. Chargers are one and three at the Saints, who are two and two. Who you guys got? Uh, um, I think this will be a lot closer game than what people think. Herbert has definitely stepped up. Uh, he's shown that he, he's a good quarterback. Uh, I think going into the season, a lot of people weren't high on him because he was an okay quarterback at Oregon. Um, but the bowl game that he was in when he broke out was when really, really people were like, this dude's good. This dude's pretty good. Um, and going into the season, people were still like, it's only one good game. I don't think he'll be good. But ever since he started, I mean, they've lost, yes, but he hasn't been terrible. He really hasn't been terrible. He's been pretty good. I mean, hey, he went in a shootout against the Buccaneers and against Tom Brady. And for him to make Brady worry and have to score that, like, his the final drive touchdown, which only gave the Chargers, like, I don't know, like 50 seconds or so, that's pretty good. That's, that's definitely good. Um, but – with Drew Brees getting Michael Thomas back as number one guy, Alvin Kamara still there. Kamara's dual threat, insanely good this year. I'd have to give it to the Saints. Um, the Saints defense is also a little bit better, um, but with Michael Thomas coming back, depending on his usage, I'd still have to give it to the Saints. You guys could both see a shootout for the. Uh... Fighting Seahawks game, and I really think the shootout is going to be right here with Saints Chargers. We saw it last week uh, with Tom Brady and Justin Herbert going back and forth. I think Herbert is, uh, it's almost going to be like the Saints dead out early, and then Herbert's going to just keep firing back and forth with Drew Brees. And I think it's going to be a shootout, uh, high scoring affair with the Saints pulling out. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm going to agree with you guys. And I, I, I think it's also going to be a shootout just looking at what the Chargers and Bucks did last week. Um, I think I think it'll be close, but I do think that just Breeze is just way better at making those winning plays at the end of the games than Justin Herbert is right now. So I'm going to take the Saints. So next – Let's talk about a game that may or may not happen. Actually, probably not going to happen, but Bills, Titans, if they were going to play, got two undefeated teams. What do, what do you think happens there? <laughs> I think the Titans are a good team, but I, I'd have to definitely give it to the Bills. I mean, the Bills offense, I think, is a little bit more complete than the Titans is. Titans passing game is not the best. Um, credit, the Bills running game is not the best. The Bills have to go to the running game. Josh Allen's going to do a lot of running. Um, but the Bills' main offense is passing, uh, which, I mean, the Titans having their break, all of their cornerbacks and safeties are healthy now. So their secondary is going to be very good. But – the Bills defense is also pretty good too. And I don't think the Titans will be able to keep Henry on the field to get enough yards for them to win the game. I think they'll have to rely on Tannehill and I think Tannehill will make a mistake or two and the Bills will take that and score. So I'd have to give it to the Bills if this game were to play. Yeah, first of all, I really do not think this game uh, will end up getting played. Um, and see, we've seen a couple more positive tests. So um, I think this one might be uh, one where the Titans have to forfeit, but I don't think that's going to make much of a difference in the outcome. I think the Bills are still, if this game would be played, I think they would still win. Uh, they've got your MVP, Jacob, with uh, Josh Allen. And I, I just think the Bills team has a little bit more of a dimension in that passing game. And obviously, they've got Josh Allen for the run game. I I like the Bills against the Titans. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to agree with you guys once again. I think it's going to be Bills. Um, Titans have a lot of significant players out with COVID. They're probably not – game's probably not going to be played. But we like to we like to imagine, you know. Like, I do think, though, if, if COVID was not a thing, 
and Titans were healthy right now. I think I think Titans could win that game. I don't. I, I think the Bills they haven't really faced a super solid team this season. I mean, they almost lost to the Dolphins week one. So, um, I. I, I think Titans, if they were healthy and none of this is happening, I think Titans could win. But I think if the game is to be played, I think Bills will blow them out. <laughs> okay, now let's go talk about the hometown Colts who are three and one at the Chicago – or no, that was last week. The Cleveland Browns at three and one. <laughs> Me being a Colts fan, I'd have to say the Colts – um, the Browns defense is good. It is a good defense. Um, I mean, Miles Garrett is going to be the main guy that the Colts offensive line is going to have to watch out for. Uh, Garrett can tear that line apart by himself. He's just that good of a threat coming off the edge. Um, but like we've said earlier, any of the other Browns offensive weapons other than Odell, or Hunt are not the best and are not always consistent. Um, if the Colts can get a lot of pressure on Baker, Baker's going to make mistakes and he's going to throw interceptions and the Colts defense will take that to their advantage. And I mean, we've seen it twice. They, they, they've been able to run interceptions for return for a pick six. Uh, the Colts have the best defense in the league right now. Um, just statistically wise, they do. Um, the Colts defense is hurt this week at the linebacker position. Darius Leonard hasn't practiced. EJ Speed got injured. Uh, Bobby Okariki also got injured. So the linebackers is thin. But, I mean, the Colts draft extremely well. They have guys who practice with them every single day. They can step in. They won't have as big of an impact, but they'll have an impact. Um, and our, the Colts secondary is good. Um, and they can definitely hold, I think, Odell and Jarvis. And and the defensive line can hold Cream Hunt. Um, and they will definitely get pressure to the quarterback. Uh, on the offensive side for the Colts, Phillip Rivers is going to have to start passing a little bit more. He's going to have to start being more accurate. Um, you can't always rely on Jonathan Taylor because, I mean, Taylor can't carry the team to a victory every single game. So, I, but yeah, I'd probably have to go with Colts just with the defense. And I think our offense is more, I guess it's a little bit more fluid. But, I mean, that'll be tested this week, I think. This will be the game that tests the Colts to see if they're, actually going to be competitors or not yeah also being a hometown Colts man I, I might be a little biased here but uh you, you mentioned some of the injuries for the Colts I uh I see that but you're right Chris Ballard mm -hmm. has uh, built a good team with good depth I really see uh the uh Colts defense being okay against a pretty decent Browns offense um, but I think the Browns offense is going to make uh, Philip Rivers have to throw the ball a little more down the field. That's why I was saying major break wheat for uh, T.Y. Hilton. So uh, I think uh, Colts will get challenged this week. But being a Colts fan, I'm going to have some faith in the Colts, and I think they're going to win. Uh, probably a close one, though. Come down to the fourth quarter. Yeah, I agree. I think it's going to be a very close game. Um, I'm a Steelers fan, but Colts are definitely my, they're my second team. I, I do root, root for the Colts as an indie person. Um, but if they're playing the Steelers, I would still go with the Steelers. But <laughs> I do like the Colts. Um, and I think this is going to be a very good game. The Browns I, will actually have to face a really good defense, not the garbage that Dallas threw at them last week. So I think that the Browns will have to rely on the pass a lot more. Baker Mayfield's going to have to make some plays. Um, I, think, I think it comes down to which quarterback plays the cleanest game. I think it's going to – it could be a shootout. It could be, a, it could be like an old-school run defense kind of game. Who knows? Um, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with old, old man Rivers in the Colts <laughs> for my pick. So we've, we've all agreed so far um, on every pick. 
pretty much. So that tells you we're going to see some uh, upsets. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We probably just jinxed all of these, but, <laughs> but uh, let's maybe we'll have some, some disagreements in this last one, but maybe not, but last but not least, we have the NFC least a battle uh, between the 0 and 4 giants and the one in three Cowboys. Who, who wins this horrible game? <laughs> Cowboys offense is definitely four times better than the Giants right now. Yeah. Cowboys defense, I think, is also be- better too. Oh my! Credit the defense isn't amazing right now, but I think it is a little bit better than the Giants. And I honestly, I think the Cowboys could blow out the Giants. So by that, I'll just go with the Cowboys. Uh, I'm, I'm also gonna have to go with the Cowboys. I think uh, this is kind of some of the some of the games that the Cowboys or the Eagles uh, definitely need to win if they're gonna look to battle each other to the first one to nine wins to make the playoffs. Um, but you're looking at a terrible Cowboys defense. That's why I think uh, maybe if you're really looking for someone in fantasy, maybe look at the Giants. Maybe go with Devontae Freeman this week. The Cowboys can't stop anybody. But that Cowboys offense is going to put up a heck of a lot more points because it's the Giants' defense. So you're going to see Dak Prescott have a good week. Uh, Cowboys are going to get a win. Yeah, I. So the, Cowboys, the Cowboys are bad. Like, they shouldn't be bad. They, they've got good players. I don't know what's happening. But they're not they're not Giants bad. So I, I mean I think the Cowboys just their offense is so much better. Like they're just it's will outscore the Giants easily. So it's gonna be the Cowboys. Um since we have a little bit of time left. Let, I'll throw one more out there. How about Steelers and Eagles? You got the Steelers coming off a bye. I know Andrew, you were talking about a Eagles upset. Are you still gonna stick with that? That is one of uh, a couple of upsets for the week for me. And uh, so I, I'm going to stick with that. Eagles, uh, they will uh, keep themselves atop the NFC least. And uh, they'll take down the Pittsburgh Steelers coming off the bye. Now, I'm going to have to go with the Steelers. Because I think the Eagles only won against the 49ers because that 49ers defense has been torn apart by injuries. And their offense, I think they were trying to incorporate guys that were coming back. And I think it was a little bit too much for Nick Mullins because or Debo uh, Samuel came back. Um, Kittle was back that game as well. So I think, they, I think he was just trying to incorporate too many people and it just didn't work out. But, I mean, the Steelers defense compared to that 49ers defense is better right now. Um, I mean, Steelers secondary is good. Uh, haven't heard of much of Fitzpatrick, but I think this could be a game that we could. Um, I mean, they have the two best pass rushers right now, uh, Bud Dupree and TJ Watt. Um, and that offense is starting to get into a groove. Um, Big Ben's especially starting to get into a groove. He's starting to get back to it. Uh, everything's starting to come together for that Steelers uh, offense. So... I'd, ha- I'd have to give it to the Steelers. Yeah, I agree with Zach, I, I, and I can't go against my Steelers, so hopefully they can become 4-0. We'll see what happens. So, sadly, that is all we have time for today on After Further Review. Please tune in next weekend and see if we got our predictions right. Thank you for joining me, Zach and Andrew. Um, for everyone listening or watching, uh, feel free to email me uh, with any questions or suggestions on topics for us to discuss. My email is jvford at bsu.edu. Also, don't forget to follow Cardinal Sports Live on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and check out our YouTube. There's some other great podcasts on there like Soccer, the NBA, which is hosted by Andrew Willett down there. And, and also, Zach will be joining you today or sa- Saturday. For the podcast so that, that's awesome <laughs> we've got nhl and mlb and even wrestling so check out those other podcasts and i hope you all have a super duper amazing wonderful day